Good morning, everyone. This is Christine Nicholas, Chair of the New York State Tourism Advisory Council, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, at, it is right now at 11.03 a.m. Uh, we'll start by taking attendance, and I will call the names from the RSVP list that I have here, and you could please raise your hand. Um, Dan Fuller. Very good. Anthony Davidovitz. Here. Oh. Uh, David Filipiak. Here. Valerie Knobloch. Okay, Eleanor Tatum. Ali Sirota, I know you're on. Hello. Hi, Alexander Stanton. Hello. Here. Hi. Very good. Um, and I know Ross Levi is on with the ESD staff and Kelly and Richard. Thank you very much. You uh, you're seen. Tom Mulroy. Very good, Tom. I was just I was just about to mention your name. Um, Alana, is Alana on yet? I know she's joining us later, but. I made it. <laughs> ah, very good. Thanks, Alana. Problem. Catherine Nichols. Hi, I'm here. Very good. And Thurman Thomas. Okay, very good. All right, is there anyone else who I missed? Good morning, everybody. This is Gabriel Lewinstein representing Assemblymember Danny O'Donnell. Welcome, Gabriel. Okay, I think we're all set then. Um, so all members have been emailed a copy of the minutes and they are also available on the ESD website. Uh, if there are any changes to the minutes, please motion. No, okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Okay, Dan Fuller and second, Alexander Stanton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I see the hands. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, not hearing any opposed, the motion carries, minutes are approved. And at this time, I'm going to please ask that everyone on the phone go on mute if you're not speaking. Thank you very much. Um, first, I wanna start with a strong and hearty congratulations um, and recognize the new governor, Kathy Hochul, and extending our congratulations as the 57th and first female governor of New York State. Her dedication and leadership and service to New York, especially regarding New York State tourism has been tremendous. I'm confident that the support of our industry experienced in the past will continue and grow under her leadership. And I think, and I look forward to working with her administration to continue supporting New York State tourism, both as a premier visitor destination and a major economic driver. And I know many of you are um, very aware of Kathy Hochul as our former Lieutenant Governor, because she has really been the one that we've been working closely with um, regarding tourism over the past few years. So we're very excited and we're hoping that she will be uh, available to join us at our next TAC meeting or in an upcoming TAC meeting. Um, so tourism related governor announcements, Governor Hochul has already made a couple of tourism related announcements since taking office. Earlier this month, she unveiled designs for a new connector that will seamlessly link New York City's High Line to Moynihan train, stage, train hall. The proposed project will give pedestrians safe, unobstructed access to the far west side of Manhattan via two bridges that will connect to the 10th Avenue terminus of the High Line. Under the plan, the new landscape Woodlands Bridge will extend eastward from the existing High Line from 10th Avenue where it will connect to the second timber bridge and connect into Brookfield's elevated public space directly across from the Farrelly Building and the Moynihan train, train Hall. This will offer a safer experience near the heavily trafficked area around the entrance to the Lincoln Tunnel. Also in early September, the governor announced a more than $3 million project to revitalize the Kaksaki State Boat Launch and Riverside Park on the Hudson River in Greene County. This will be the first state boat launch to be renewed under the Hudson Eagles Recreation Area, an initiative to improve public access and resiliency on the wild stretch of the Hudson River between Albany and Kingston and enhance connections to the waterfront communities in the region. That looks great. Lastly, I wanted to provide a debrief on the Tourism and Rail work, Working Group uh, that met um, this July. And I do wanna thank those 
Um, as you'll remember during our last meeting, Donna Haynes and Tom Martinelli joined us to start the conversation about how tourism and rail are connected and how New York's railways could be maximized to benefit tourism. After that meeting, a few of us participated in a call with Ron Epstein, Executive Deputy Commissioner of the Policy and Planning Committee at the Department of Transportation, as well as Steven Anderson, Managing Director at Infrastructure USA and Advocacy Group for High Speed Rail. Overall, it was very informative. We learned quite a bit about what issues DOT juggles when it comes to rail, like cost, logistics, and the reliance on the federal government to advance projects. Currently, their primary focus is on investing in a reliable rail experience, which includes projects like the Albany Double Track, updating older cars and increasing the speeds of trains to 90 to 100 miles per hour to cut 30 to 40 minutes off of the trip from Albany to Buffalo. In addition, the Department of Transportation mentioned that the state planned to bring together a panel of engineers to re-examine and rethink strategies to bring high-speed rail to New York as part of the 2020 State of the State. The TAC certainly supports all these efforts and we encourage the current administration to continue forward with the proposed panel and stay engaged with the high-speed rail conversation. Now I'd like to turn it over to Ross Levi who has, who has some special updates for us. Ross? Thank you, Christine. Uh, before I start, I think uh, we had some additional tech members join us just so you can uh, get them for attendance. Okay, terrific. Um, I don't see them on my screen. I think oh, it, but... Valerie. Valerie now block here. Very good, Valerie. And Eleanor Tatum is here, now I see. Okay. And I also think Thurman Thomas, I thought I saw. I have to redo my view here so I can see everybody. Um, Thurm, are you with us? I see. I, okay. I thought I, thought I saw there Thurman. Are. Oh, there he is. Hey, Thurman. Great. Got the thumbs up. Okay, very good. <laughs> Great. Well, thank okay. you. Okay, welcome everybody. This is really terrific to have this uh, this wonderful uh, participation. I think this is the first where we've had just about every TAC member. On the, uh, on the call, so thanks very much. So I'm gonna go on mute. Anybody else who's not speaking, you can go on mute so that Ross can give us an update. Thanks so much. Thank you, thank you, Christine. Thank you, TAC members. Good to uh, virtually see you again. It's uh, been a few months uh, pre, pre-summer since we last met. Um, so I thought it would be appropriate to start by taking a step back and providing some context and perspective to remind us all of everything that tourism has been through over the past 18 months. It certainly has been a roller coaster ride. Um, you know, first, it's worth remembering where we were prior to COVID, um, that New York State was seeing record levels of visitation uh, and also record levels of tourism economic impact. Um, over the prior decade, uh, we saw visitation increase 35% to over 264 million visitors. Economic impact had increased to 117 billion with a B, uh, and tourism-related jobs grew uh, 30% to close to 1 million people in New York State working in the tourism industry, one in 10 jobs, literally. And of course, as we all know, COVID uh, dealt that a severe blow. Uh, Visitation dropped throughout the state, um, especially uh, international visitation, of course, as the borders closed. And, you know, while no part of the state was immune to that drop, some areas saw it worse than others. Uh, Areas like New York City uh, were disproportionately affected, um, particularly given the drop in that international visitation um, with the areas of the state that rely on that so heavily. Um, The good news is that um, initial indicators show uh, that many areas of the states are experiencing some rebound. Now, no place in the state is seeing occupancy rates completely back to pre-COVID levels, but some areas are really edging back up and getting very close to that number. That said, there are also other regions, uh, most notably New York City, which are really uh, still struggling. So the takeaway here in terms of where things are is that um, there is certainly improvement in tourism from the depths of the pandemic. Uh, but we're certainly not yet where we want to be and where we need to be. Uh, Many of you have heard the news uh, that the travel restrictions for fully vaccinated international travelers are being lifted by the federal government starting in November. So that's great news. We hope 
that will help areas like New York City and Greater Niagara and others uh, move closer to their pre-pandemic visitor levels. So we'll be watching that closely. Uh, we hope to have the final and official 2020 uh, tourism numbers very shortly, uh, and we will be able to review that in greater detail with all of you at uh, a future TAC meeting. In the meantime, um, though, one of the best things we can do to support the tourism industry is to continue to encourage visitation in New York State, um, albeit in ways that reflect the new reality we're living in. So I'd like to review with you what I Love New York has been up to this summer since we last met last May. Um, let's also remember as we're doing that, there are a number of different state resources available beyond what we're doing here in the Division of Tourism to assist businesses, uh, including tourism businesses, respond to the effects of COVID. Uh, we've talked about them at prior tech meetings, but just to refresh our memories, they include things like a, an $800 million COVID-19 pandemic recovery grant program for small businesses, including for-profit arts and cultural institutions, uh, a New York restaurant resiliency grant program with $25 million in grant funding to support restaurants, an arts and cultural organization recovery grant program with $40 million in grants through the New York State Council for the Arts, as Catherine knows, uh, a restaurant return to work tax credit, which provides up to $35 million in tax credits to support restaurants, the New York City musical and theatrical production tax credit, which provides up to $100 million in tax credits, and an $8 million extended and enhanced musical and theatrical production credit to support live performances outside of New York City. So in addition to the sort of demand side work that we do, um, it's good to remember that New York State is trying to do what it can to help the supply side as well. But as far as I Love New York's efforts to increase travel and tourism in the state, uh, since we've last met, we've aired five different commercials um, one that's solely focused on New York City, something we haven't done in a while, uh, and four highlighting various attractions throughout the state. All these commercials are part of the state's $40 million global campaign aimed at revitalizing the state's tourism industry. Uh, the campaign promotes tourism attractions across all regions of the state through the summer, fall, and winter tourism seasons. And the first, far, uh, first phase of this campaign focused on New York City and invited international and domestic visitors to come be a part of it. Uh, it ran on digital outlets in select international markets, uh, at least keeping New York State top of mind, even, even as the borders closed, uh, and on broadcast TV in national and local markets where people could actually come visit the state. Uh, a second phase featured world-class upstate New York attractions and ran through the summer. So we have, like I said, five of these commercials, and we'd like to show them for you now. Even today, start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. It's up to you. This year, more than ever, there's a lot to love about New York State. Come be a part of it. Plan your summer getaway at iloveny.com. It's time to get out and explore New York State. Come be a part of it. Plan your summer getaway at iloveny.com. Perfect New York State summer is just waiting to be discovered. Come be 
a part of it. Plan your summer getaway at iloveny.com. It's time to get out and explore New York State. So that was all the paid advertising uh, television commercials we did for the summer. Uh, And on September 6th, we officially launched our highly anticipated fall foliage campaign, uh, complete with the fall foliage report, uh, which hopefully most of you know is updated weekly. Um, And with a new feature this year now allows users to interact with an online map where they could click on different sections of the state and get a selection of various places to see foliage and attractions that are uh, nearby that they can enjoy. The Fall Foliage Project is usually our best performing effort of the year. uh, And we've already started to receive press attention for local and national print and broadcast outlets. As a matter of fact, I believe later today, uh, I did an interview with Lee Goldberg from ABC News 7 um, uh, for his uh, online TV show um, that airs on Apple TV and Roku and a bunch of other outlets, including the ABC website. Um, And that was specifically on the fall report. And I think we had about a five or 10 minute interview um, that'll be airing there. So uh, we continue to release the reports every Wednesday to let followers know where in New York State they can see brilliant foliage uh, during the upcoming weekend. Um, And we also began our fall advertising campaign in conjunction with that with a new commercial that launched on September 13th. So we'll show that fall commercial for you now. The next time you're wondering about where to go on vacation this fall, don't forget about all of the wonder that awaits you in New York. So that is running now and uh, will continue running, I believe, into early November. So uh, hopefully you've seen that or we'll see it soon. In addition to our paid uh, media work, uh, we were happy to host our first post-COVID media night as part of our PR efforts uh, held on August 4th in New York City. Now, since we're not 100% back to normal, Uh, We intentionally put together a small media reception rather than the larger events we're used to uh, and held it at an outdoor venue so that people would feel comfortable. Uh, We built it as a rooftop reunion and used it as an opportunity to reconnect with travel media with whom we've been in contact, uh, but not seen for uh, basically 16 months. Uh, it was a reception style event so that our TPA partners could mingle and interact with travel media without having to st- stand behind a table. And, uh, though, of course, we did do a presentation to the entire group, uh, highlighting some of the latest and greatest uh, tourism developments in the state, doing some giveaways with them and, and creating some excitement around the event. Uh, in total, we were thrilled that 44 travel media attended uh, for a small event. That, that was terrific. Uh, about half of whom we're new to an I Love New York event, which is always good to get new travel journalists uh, connected with us. Uh, everybody there expressed to us how happy they were to be out again uh, and eager to write about New York State uh, and how thankful they were that we gave them the opportunity to reconnect. Um, many are in touch requesting press trips uh, due to the pent up demand that uh, they are feeling just like so many other travelers. And so overall, it was a real success. And Uh, Kudos to Lisa Soto and her PR team um, for that um, and taking a look at uh, how we how we move on in staying connected with media uh, as we move into fall and winter. It's also worth remembering that the Great New York State Fair took place um, from August 24th to September 5th. And while it was a a scaled down event, um, it did happen. Uh, which is great because it it had to miss a year. So um, this was really, I think, a great transition back into 
in-person activations and events. Uh, we promoted the fair with a commercial that ran in the weeks leading up to and through the fair uh, in our typical market so people could be aware that it was back um, for people to enjoy. We can show that uh, commercial for you now. One year of fire tickets is one too many. Don't miss the return of the great New York State Fair, August 20th through September 6th. Come be a part of it. Get your tickets at ilovenyone.com. Sorry about the audio issue on that, but you, you got the idea of uh, a great way to promote the fair uh, via paid advertising. Um, we also did an activation uh, in the uh, State Parks building. Not a lot of people know that the smallest state park in New York State is at the State Fair. Um, and we had a building there throughout the entirety of the fair, which featured uh, 3D interactive games and quizzes. People put on glasses and walked around and uh, saw uh, photos that popped out at them and uh, learned trivia and took a trivia quiz. Um, that allowed them to learn about the regions of New York and then win a prize from a, an official I Love New York vending machine at the end if they got enough answers right that gave them some I Love New York swag. Uh, we also participated in Pride Day at the fair. We're very proud that New York State was the first state fair in the nation to have an official uh, day uh, dedicated to the LGBTQ community. Um, I spoke at the opening ceremony to begin the day, and we also, also had a booth on site uh, to promote the I Love New York LGBTQ program. And so, you know, while this wasn't the same sort of super grand presence with, you know, thousands and thousands of square feet that we've had in the past couple of years, our petition, our participation felt uh, very appropriate and seemed to be very effective so far um, and still succeeded in educating folks about all there is to do at the state, which is a great opportunity for us uh, at the fair. So we look forward to next year as well and hopefully even bigger and better. Speaking of I Love New York LGBTQ, um, it was a while ago, but since our last TAC meeting, um, we participated uh, in Pride Month uh, with two major events. Uh, on June 24th, uh, New York State signed the Gender Recognition Act, uh, removing long-standing barriers to equality under the law and ensuring extended protections for transgender and non-binary New Yorkers. Uh, after that bill signing, I Love New York LGBTQ co-hosted a luncheon to celebrate uh, that accomplishment, as well as 10 years of marriage equality in New York State, and all the while using that as an opportunity to promote destinations across New York State of interest to LGBTQ travelers. Um, we were joined by elected officials, industry partners, and LGBTQ advocates and community members. And then on June 27th, I was able to join the live broadcast, the official live broadcast of, the, of New York City's Pride March uh, for an interview about the I Love New York LGBTQ program and highlight all the things there are for LGBTQ uh, travelers in New York State to do, especially after opening back up during the summer. Here's a clip uh, from that interview. And welcome back. We're live. Channel 7's live coverage of the New York City Pride March. We just saw some beautiful shots of the Empire State Building from when it was lit up for the Pride March last year. And tonight, the iconic building will be lit with all the inclusive Pride flag colors once again. It is so beautiful. And New York has always been a destination mm -hmm. spot. And now after a year of COVID and the closings and restrictions, we are finally opening up again. The vaccination rate is going up, which is great news for all the travelers who have been itching to explore the Empire State. So standing with us right now is Ross Levi, executive director of I Love New York and the director of marketing for Empire State Development. So uh, it's been a challenging year for tourism overall. We just have to start with that for COVID. So how are things? Sure. Luckily, things are getting much better. Um, you know, tourism is one of New York's biggest and most important industries. Uh, we welcomed 265 million visitors before COVID. Yeah. And clearly COVID was a big speed pump that was devastating for our industry. But the good news is New York State is open. The uh, rainbow carpet is out. We're welcoming visitors back. And there's new and exciting things that people have never seen before that are just open. Uh, the, the largest Lego land in the world just opened this summer. We ran a story on that, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. 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 There's uh, the Empire State Trail, the largest multi, the longest multi-use trail in the United States. You could walk or hike from New York City to Canada or Albany to Buffalo along the Erie Canal. There's new mountain coasters and zip lines in the Adirondacks. Just so much to see and do. So we all know that theme song. You might want to sing it with me. I love, love New, New York. York. Yes. So that was a great campaign from, I think, the 70s or the 80s. But I also understand there's a whole LGBTQIA plus tourism program that's been part of the state. Yes, that's absolutely right. Uh, you know, New York State has such a long history with the LGBTQ community. The birth place of our modern movement with Stonewall yep. um, 10 years ago uh, this week, New York becoming the first large state for marriage equality. And a year after that, in 2012, at this very parade, Governor Cuomo unveiled I Love New York LGBTQ, which was a tourism initiative to welcome and invite the LGBTQ community to see all the amazing activities and attractions that are all across New York State. And people could go to ilovenewyork.com backslash LGBTQ to see all that. So do you think it can give us like one or so two that gives you a sense not. of of the the clip um you know that uh that went on that whole segment for five minutes which was really significant exposure for new york state and our destination so we were thrilled to have that opportunity um at tech we don't often uh highlight our paid uh i love new york logo licensing partnerships um one of the things the division of tourism does is we are responsible uh, for the iHeartNY logo uh, and licensing that. Um, and we had one uh, opportunity that I wanted to mention um, because it was, it was a pretty cool thing. Uh, Kate Spade approached us a while back about using the I Love New York logo on some of their merchandise. And they launched an official line of I Love New York branded merchandise on September 8th. Um, items included uh, handbags and shoes, jewelry, AirPod cases, and other things um, available both at their stores and on their website. So even more important than the revenue that this brings in for the state and for tourism, uh, we were able to maximize the opportunity, as we do with all our licensing arrangements, to promote visitation across New York State. Um, some stores have amazing displays, not just here in New York, but some Kate Spade stores across the nation, um, with our logo highlighting its history uh, and how it represents New York State tourism. Kate Spade is also doing social media promotions um, that are promoting destinations in New York State to their followers. Uh, in addition, uh, to officially launch their line during Fashion Week, Kate Spade created a real apple orchard right in the middle of New York City, bringing apples from across New York State uh, to a location um, with our logo splashed throughout. So we just wanted to point this out as a, a great example of how we work to maximize the I Love New York logo to reach new travel audiences in unique and unexpected ways. So if you are out and about and see this with Kate Spade, you'll, you'll know what that was all about. We talked about the borders reopening um, and we haven't been silent though on the international front in the meantime. Um, at the very least, we want to make sure that travel trade is continuing to think of New York State. Uh, we want everybody to have New York State top of mind so that when those borders are open, uh, people are able to act on that pent up demand and, and come back to New York State. Um, along those lines, on June 30th and July 1st, um, the Receptive Tour Operator Summit was held in New York City at the Marriott Marquis. It was one of the city's first uh, trade shows. Uh, and in 2019, we agreed to sponsor. The event for 2020. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because of COVID, but luckily we were able to honor our sponsorship this year. Uh, and we were able to directly address the attendees and encourage them to include New York State in their offerings, which, uh, as most of you know, the receptive operators are a really important piece in that international puzzle. Um, Markley Wilson uh, from our team was able to attend and set up some very productive meetings with receptive operators. Uh, we were very happy to see this event take place, uh, and we look forward to seeing more and more of these types of events, which are critical to our success, uh, staying involved with um, our trade events uh, here in New York and, and internationally, in fact. The, inter the international team also successfully launched the first I Love New York Travel Marketplace, uh, a virtual trade show event that brought together international wholesalers with several TPAs from across the state. Um, it's become clear to us that since the pandemic, there is an increased interest, uh, particularly among international travelers, for outdoor recreation opportunities. 
Uh, and of course, New York State has ample offerings in this area. So Mark Lee and his team put together this marketplace to take advantage of wholesalers looking for additional product to offer, particularly in the outdoor space. Uh, we developed a guide specifically highlighting outdoor experiences that are bookable and internationally friendly. We also organized 15 minute one on one appointments between 11 TPAs and tour wholesalers from England and Germany. Uh, overall, the event really went well, and we're in the process of getting official feedback from the participants to see if this is something that makes sense uh, to replicate, um, certainly before in-person trade events get to their past level, but maybe even once they do. Uh, I also wanted to mention uh, a, a workforce initiative that you've heard us talk about at prior meetings. We continue to support the state's tourism industry by hosting additional virtual job fairs. Uh, the next fair is taking place on October 7th, and it's specifically geared towards winter tourism businesses statewide. Not exclusively, but that's that's kind of the emphasis. Uh, registration has been open for uh, two weeks now, um, and we already have over 30 employers um, who are going to be participating. So that's terrific. Um, in an effort to increase the number of job seekers who are attending, our team has been reaching out to numerous colleges and university career centers uh, in New York State, particularly those with hospitality programs, to ask them to let their students know about the job fair, uh, as well as form an initial relationship with those schools um, for future opportunities. Uh, we know how badly some businesses need employees. Everywhere we go, we hear about workforce as an issue. So we're hoping that this fair provides uh, an opportunity for employers to help fill those vacancies that are out there. Uh, and lastly, as part of my report, I wanted uh, to touch on a federal funding opportunity that we are uh, trying to secure. Um, I'm sure many TAC members have heard about the various tourism funding streams available under the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the tourism grant program being administered through the Economic Development Administration, the EDA, um, is of particular note for those in the tourism industry. Uh, the funding from the EDA for tourism is broken up into two streams, 240 million in competitive grants to help communities that have been hardest hit by challenges facing the travel, tourism, and outdoor recreation sectors to invest in infrastructure, workforce, and other uh, non-marketing projects to support the recovery of the industry and economic resilience of the community in the future. And then the second stream is a $510 million uh, stream in non-competitive awards to help states quickly invest in marketing, infrastructure, workforce, uh, and other projects to rejuvenate safe leisure, business, and international travel. So under that non-competitive stream for the states, um, we were invited to apply for the, um, the non-competitive state tourism grant uh, to be eligible to receive up to 44.997, so basically just shy of $45 million for tourism projects um, over the next four years, that's, I think, an important aspect of this grant. It's not just a one-year, one-shot, but in fact, it's an award that $45 million can be used over a three- or four-year period to, to really make a great impact. Um, as far as we know, this is the second largest state grant um, that um, is being considered, um, with New York State basically tied for California. And the next state after us, um, only eligible for around $18 million. So. I think that shows that the federal government recognizes how badly uh, the New York State tourism economy was hurt and how much we could benefit from this help. Uh, we submitted our application materials just late last week. Um, and since the EDA is looking to disperse the grants quickly, we hope to hear uh, if we will be receiving that full amount soon and, and whether they approve the, the plan we want to do. Uh, once we know what the status of all that is, we'll be sharing more information with you uh, and our industry partners. And that, Christine, concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Ross. Um, I do wanna thank you for all of your efforts. I thought, um, you know, the Channel 7 piece was terrific, um, but everything that you've done, uh, it's just been fantastic. I do also wanna give a shout out to Bobby Zaram um, or, a, you know, remembering Bobby Zaram, he passed away and he was an integral part of the original I Love New York campaign. There's a um, there's an obit by Sam Roberts in today's New York Times. Uh, if you have a moment, you should read it. Uh, he was quite a character. I feel um, 
blessed to have known him. And every time I saw him, he made sure that I knew that he was behind the I Love New York campaign and wanted us to, uh, you know, bring it back to its, its splendor. And I think when I saw that commercial, I think we have, um, and I'm very proud of it. So um, I wanna open it up to questions. I will take the chairman's prerogative and ask the first question if you don't mind, but um, very pleased that we got the application in for the 45 million um, grant. And just curious if you can outline for us, what um, plans do you have on how to spend that money? Should we be so lucky to be awarded that, those funds? Sure. Yeah, the proposal we submitted to the EDA focused on those areas that either have been hurt the most or represent the best opportunity for rebounding. Um, so we took a look um, at international travel, uh, knowing how important that is, the outdoor recreation, as I alluded to, we know that that's uh, an area of actually potential growth um, and new opportunity post-COVID, uh, and looking at re-engaging um, or engaging even further and more deeply with the travel trade um, in terms of mice work, meetings and conventions, group travel, um, uh, sports, amateur sports travel. Um, so those sorts of areas. Um, we looked uh, at not only efforts that would be done by ESD and, and the Division of Tourism, um, but also opportunities for sister agencies to get involved, particularly in the outdoor recreation piece, um, as well as hopefully a pool of funding um, that will be uh, available competitively uh, for some tourism and partners in New York State um, to complement those efforts that we will be taking on ourselves. So, you know, all of that is uh, subject to uh, the review and approval of the EDA, but that was what was involved in our proposal. Okay, terrific. Um, we have a couple of hands up. I'll start with Alana Petroselli and then Valerie Knobloch. Alana? Uh, Saturday, I was. Oh. Alana, just unmute your um, your mic. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Hold on. Hear me? Oh. Yes. Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so Alana, I'm going to put you on hold and, and hopefully you can um, figure out the audio. So Valerie, if you want to ask your question, go on. Hey, Ross, uh, thank you. As Christine said, for all those efforts, it was nice to get that update and uh, the positive actions there. I, I had a couple questions. One's about the fair and one is about um, matching funds and um, which of course you would expect me to ask, but um, and then I also want to throw out an idea, a merchandising idea in, in general. So um, first I'll throw out the merchandising idea and the, the Kate Spade stuff is really cool. And I'm glad to see the extension of that. Um, for years, I've wanted an I Love New York license plate, you know, like you see in other states. So just throw that out there as if we want to brand something. We got a lot of cars driving around up here that might be proud for an I Love New York.com license plate. Yeah, you, you may want to check the DMV, I think it may exist. I, okay. I know it did in recent years, so I, I don't know if it's been continued, but uh, we should we should check the, the DMV. Okay. And even promote it as such versus like blue and gold or whatever that is we got going on. So um, um, with regard to New York State matching funds, I know you're keeping the TPAs up to date through the NYSTE uh, monthly meetings, but we're, we're all sitting here with bated breath wondering about the flow of cash that we're spending. And I don't know if this is an appropriate time to ask that, if there's new policies, new attention to that or, or anything. That's my question on matching funds. Yes, so two pieces of matching funds. First of all, the funds for the current year we are in, um, we have been told that that money should be flowing very soon. Um, and uh, basically we were given the time frame of uh, sort of September and that's now. So uh, hopefully that's the case. Um, but we're waiting to hear um, that that money will be flowing. We've certainly received all the materials from the TPAs. We've processed that here um, at ESD. So we're just hoping for that to come soon. Um, and then I would say uh, also equally important, uh, the 2022 program, um, which is probably 
you know, the first one going back to kind of the way pre-COVID things worked, that should be back on the regular time frame. that in the next 30 days or so, um, there should be information coming out on the process for applying for that funding um, so that that funding can get out uh, in early 2022. Um, so that program will be set for the for the upcoming year. Okay, uh, thank you. I was I was aware of that like September promise, and I just rather than sitting and waiting, wondered if there's any specific actions that we should be taking to relay the importance of that as um, as people are putting out the money. So if you think of anything, let us know on the next nice dia call. I know I'm the only TPA here in the council, but New York State Fair, the extension this year. Um, you know, was 10 more days. I wondered what the process will be moving forward, if you know, or we can look at down the road to evaluating whether that was effective, whether it's necessary, the, um, the implications of that on um, engagement through the, through the different industries. So I don't, there's a process to go. Is that a good idea? Should we backtrack or not? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the length of the fair itself, that's a question for uh, Ag and Markets, for the New York State uh, Office of Ag and Markets. Uh, they are the administrators of the state fair. Um, I know they do a lot of research um, in order to figure out the effectiveness of the fairs and way to, ways to improve it. I have not heard a debrief yet, but it's obviously only a few weeks from this year's fair, so presumably we'll see um, how that went. Um, it, you know, it's going to be a a bit of a strange year since we're still in COVID. So it may be challenging for them to make decisions going forward. So, but I haven't heard anything yet. Um, they stay pretty close in touch with us though, on a number of fronts, including that one. So we certainly can let you and, and we'll be letting our industry partners know uh, once we have uh, more information on what next year is going to look like. Okay. And again, um, my, my request is more, can we input that process? You know, can we give information in advance of, and it shall be, you know, so please, please keep us in mind for that because I know there's a lot of people out there that have thoughts on, on that. So appreciate the engagement and understand it's ag and markets and appreciate you taking us forward there. That's my questions, Christine. No, but uh, thank you, Valerie. And, and um, what I will share because we do have a, a, quite a few new members of, of TAC. Before um, COVID, and it was about two years before COVID, uh, there was a task force with Ag, Ag and Markets, and TAC was part of that, um, on increasing the number of days for the state fair. And they did a, a study, and, um, and it was all about improving the state fair as well. Um, and from what I recall, and Ross, we could go back to the minutes, but um, they had expanded the number of days, but if you moved it any further into September, it would, uh, it would end up costing more money than they would be bringing in because you have the drop off with schools. And then if they moved it any earlier, they didn't think that they would have the participation of what is sort of like the, the traditional um, suppliers of the of the state fair, which are the farmers and the you know uh, the vendors, and they couldn't bring the cows in. I mean, so we tried. We really was at one point we were hoping it could be the whole month of August, but um, this is what they came up with. Um, but I would be very curious, Ross, if we could invite Ag and Markets to an upcoming TAC and get an idea how this year's state fair worked out. And if there's anything from uh, that we can do to help support them, uh, I thought the promotion this year was very good. Uh, but I always like to hear and, and uh, learn about, you know, how that state fair is doing. So, Valerie, thanks for bringing that to our attention. Yeah, well, we can absolutely make that invitation, um, you know, whether November will be too soon. You know, I'll ask them, but certainly in an upcoming meeting, I'm sure they'd love to come and, uh, and engage that way. They've been terrific partners. Yeah, I mean, usually we we also have a meeting uh, once a year in Albany. Obviously, we haven't done that during COVID, but we're hoping that we will bring our March meeting back uh, to Albany. Um, and then maybe that might be a good time to have them because then they would be, I would think, in deep planning for the next state fair. Great. We'll, we'll inquire. Terrific. Um, Alana, are you back? Do you still have a question or I'm back, I think, I hope. And uh, no, I'm good. Everything was answered. Sorry about okay, that. Okay, terrific. And we can hear you. 
Okay, I don't see any other hands, but please, um, TAC members, if you have questions, please weigh in. Hey, Christine, it's Catherine Nichols. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Good. Um, so question, I guess, for, for both you and Ross. Um, I'm thinking that many New Yorkers and most Canadians are still perplexed by the ongoing land border closure. Um, you know, we don't seem to have clear guidance on what it's going to take to reopen the land border. While on the other hand, the Canadian border did open for fully vaxxed Americans to travel on August the 9th. So wondering if you have any insights or you've heard any updates, and then I may have a second part to that question. I'm gonna let Ross handle this. He touched on it earlier, but if you have any additional insights. Yeah, I mean, all I really know is it's a exceedingly hot issue um, at the federal level, uh, including um, members of our New York congressional delegation, uh, Senate and House, uh, advocating very hard for the reopening of those borders. I do not have any inside information on timing around that though. Okay, so I guess my second part to that, and I'm not sure if this is appropriate in any way, but if there's an opportunity for the TAC to write something in support of reopening this border because of the importance to our sector, whether that's in support of Governor Hochul's position on the border or whether it's to the Biden administration just reinforcing um, the readiness. I think, you know, Canadians, or at least in Ontario, are now required to present vaccine passports for just about everything. So I think, you know, this is a constituency that could travel safely to the U.S. The vaccination rate is now higher uh, in Canada than the U.S. So I'm just wondering if it's in any way appropriate for us as a council to make some statement in support of this. It may be inappropriate, but I just thought I'd get your thoughts. Um, if there's any you know, point in considering that. I don't think it's inappropriate at all. And I know that whenever I had the opportunity to speak out about it, I had always mentioned to uh, you know, to push the borders to open. In fact, I had the opportunity over Memorial Day weekend to talk to Senator Schumer about this issue um, as things were starting to reopen. So I think, um, Ross, we should just, and Rich, we should probably talk about what is the best route to do this. If it's a letter to the Biden administration copying the governor, or if it's a letter to the governor copying the, you know, that I, I need some guidance on. But I think, look, when I, when I look around who's sitting at the table now, and I see how what businesses you represent, tourism overall, but there are definitely TPAs and, and uh, folks on this call that depend on the Canadian tourist. Um, so, and I see some heads nodding. So, um, you know, it's, it's not only in your best interest, it's in the interest of the state. And I think Ross, at one point, you had given us some numbers at a previous meeting about what Canadian tourism means to New York State. Uh, we can follow up with the group by email, or we can, and you know, include that in the letter. Um, but we miss our we miss our neighbors from the north, so um, we want to make sure that they feel welcome. Uh, even when the borders are open, we want to make sure that they feel safe. Considering Catherine, what you mentioned with the vax numbers uh, being higher, we want to make sure that New York State is put in the most positive light, so that um, visitors feel welcome and safe coming to New York State and our um, in our attractions. Yep. And, well, and I'll get back to you, Christine, on, on that point of, you know, any any guidance I receive or any advice I receive in terms of the, the best way for the, the tech to put together a statement like that. Great. And, you know, in my rep representing the uh, Arts Council, perhaps there's a way we could co-sign uh, something. And either way, I think I, for one, and probably many of the TAC members would be willing to sign on to something that would encourage consideration. Um, obviously it's a hot button and obviously we're not the only voices, but we could be another official voice representing our sectors. Um, so if there's a way to, um, you know, if it's appropriate and there's a way to collaborate on that, um, I would be interested as well. Thank you for that suggestion. I like that very much. David, I see you have your hand up. Yes, yeah, separate from my hand up, I'm curious, Ross and Christine, have you heard why the land borders haven't opened up that you, other than there, it just hasn't yet? 
even with the announcement of the air borders opening? I don't have a reason. Uh, all I know is that there's been uh, dates and then the dates have changed and it's been start and stop and it's been very frustrating. So, right. but I don't so without a reason why, I think Catherine's suggestion of TAC having a position uh, that it's time would be very, very helpful. Be not having a position at some point, we'll start saying what we think about it. So I think having a stated position would be important and helpful. Separate from that, I had my hand raised on something completely different before Catherine brought up that good uh, good point. Was um, uh, Ross, it was great to see that not only you attended, but sponsored RTO. Uh, in future international trade shows, do you have any slated or are they contingent upon that um, grant that you're uh, seeing if we're fortunate to be awarded? No, it's not contingent on the grant per se. Um, it's contingent a little more on the COVID conditions. Um, you know, we, we kept an eye on IPW this year and, you know, we're watching. And there and even before COVID, there was some interesting evolutions going on. Brand USA uh, was doing some really interesting international trade show work that we were a part of that were very that was very successful. Um, so, so basically, we're we're watching, and and I'm not sure you if you know because uh, you're a fairly new member. Generally, traditionally, what I Love New York had been doing for the last few years on a regular basis were IPW, WTM, and ITB. Um, and then in recent years, we added the Brand USA. Um, so we continue to watch those and others. The the federal grant could affect doing more. Um, or doing things more broadly uh, or deeply as we participate in those. Um, but basically, the bottom line is we're watching, we're monitoring the ones that make us that make sense to be a part of. We are uh, we are being a part of. And as I alluded to, we're not just waiting for that. Um, while we're in this sort of weird middle ground, we created our own sort of virtual trade show. It was a you know smaller scale, but still great participation. Um, and we're going to be looking at those options as well. It's a very interesting time for this space. Correct. I just attended the IPW in Las Vegas. I just got back from it last week. It was an interesting uh, one. And um, so the Orlando one's coming up in June, and I wasn't sure if you've committed to that one yet. Uh, keeping an eye on it is Great. what I'd say so far. David, I'm just curious if I could ask how well attended the meeting was in Las Vegas. Um, it was It was, It was. was interesting. Uh, the attendance was noticeably down from previous IPWs. I think I've attended 10 of them in the past. It was it was not like the IPWs of, of yore, but as an individual museum attraction, I had 70 appointments that I had to meet with. And, and so on an individual level, I was busy. On a grand scale level, it was noticeably down, but there was business being done. Um, it, I, I do get the sense that a lot of um, vendors, the attractions and, and, and thus, are waiting for the June one. I think the June one will be the, the larger of the two this year. And, and I'm curious, the 70 appointments that you had, were they uh, international? I, you know, were they, or were they reps that are based here in the US? Uh, it, was, it was a mix. I was expecting a, a vast majority of being domestic or domestic reps for an international company, but it was, it was, surprising to me how many were coming from out of town. A lot of South Americans were able to make it up here. And uh, US Travel Association was able, if I understood it correctly, get some special dispensations for visas from some UK suppliers that did make it over. So it was it was more international than I expected, to be honest with you. That's encouraging. Great. All right, does anybody have any other questions or want to introduce any new business? Christine, this is Dan. I just had a couple of comments. Uh, first off, last winter with um, with the excitement of everyone getting outdoors, the ski areas were quite active throughout the year. And um, last week we had our annual meeting and it was great to acknowledge that there were no outbreaks or anything like that at any ski areas in New York State or, or really the entire U.S. at that point, which was a great great thing to announce. And I think uh, that's because really the industries work so close together beginning, you know, as early as March a year ago. And uh, second thing, I just want to mention that uh, Mike Pratt from Orta was uh, presented the uh, Hall of Fame, the Sandy Hall of Fame Award. So maybe Ross, that's something uh, that you can maybe pass on to Mike. It was, it was really well deserved and everybody was excited about that. 
Yeah, that's great. Perfect. Great to hear. Thanks, Dan. Good. Well, Anthony, this is really your first fall meeting. So I was just curious, considering your destination, which is mostly outdoors, how are you uh, compared to last year and then, of course, 2019? How are you guys doing? Um, last year was an interesting anomaly. Obviously, we, like many organizations, opened uh, later in the season than we anticipated and were then subject to site restrictions, um, which which were re- were reasonable, uh, but challenged given that we're 500 acres. Um, I think what the lower Hudson region saw generally last year was a real surge in outdoor activity interest. And you saw that not only at places like the Art Center, at Stone King, but also along regional trails. Um, this year, there is definitely um, a softening in that demand um, for, for outdoor as there is substitutability uh, within the city and, and up and down the Hudson Valley. Um, so we're now looking a little bit more like 2019 than we were 2020. Um, it will certainly be uh, the work that, that Ross uh, and I Love New York are doing to promote some more outside um, tourism will certainly will certainly be helpful, although the majority of our tourists or of our visitors do come from the greater New York area. Um, there is a notable contingent who come from further than that, um, whether it's international or whether it's um, coming from Philadelphia or the Boston area. Um, so I think we, like many other uh, tourism destinations in the, in the lower Hudson Valley, will um, look forward to, to that work uh, coming to fruition. Okay, Ross, pressure's on there for you, okay? <laughs> We have full faith. <laughs> All right. Well, if um, if we don't have any further business, um, I will make a motion. Oh, first, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November 15th at 11 a.m. At this point, we are uh, expecting it to um, be in person, we hope, but we can always drop back to virtual if necessary. Um, and I do thank you for your participation today. I need a motion to approve, please, to, uh, to adjourn. So moved. Okay, Anthony, in a second. I'll second it, Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. Okay, so the meeting is adjourned and it is 12 o'clock. So you have a little extra time to uh, work really hard to bring in some additional tourists. So now the pressure is on you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. A wonderful week and we'll see you soon. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.